Well, the reason why is because the good Lord called me to do three things. First, expose evil, then give hope, and then call people back to the Word of God. If you have a prophetic ministry, it's very easy, if you don't expose evil, to give flippin' hope. Oh, just vote the characters out of office. See? But on the other side, it's very easy to expose evil and then walk away without giving people hope. But if you're doing like I'm trying to do, to expose evil to the very depths of evil, it's very hard to give people hope. So this is very important to our discussion today. There are better answers. For instance, to show that every mathematical, scientific, and philosophical system has vagueness and contradictions within their principles. Philosophers cannot define and defend their own criteria of meaning without employing self-defeating arguments. All philosophy and mathematical systems have paradoxes when one pushes to get total clarity of terms. One has to either accept A, some vagueness of terms, or B, accept paradox with extremely clear terms. Next, common sense of human existence means we must accept the contradictions that accompany the complexity of the sense and nonsense of our spiritual environment. Life is full of nonsense. If you try to write a computer program to decide whether somebody loved you and they squeeze your toothpaste from the middle of the tube and the computer program kicks it out that they don't love you. Life is full of a lot of nonsense. It can't be broken down into logic. The problem of evil is actually a sign that reveals that there are deep issues of life that must be plumbed, like a crack in the earth's crust that plunges out of sight. Now, people, evil is not out of control. God has said, I will establish a point in time here that I'll allow evil to begin, and evil can continue until this point in time. And then he showed us that in between these two points, all evil can be turned to good, and the proof of that is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God can view evil in a different view because he is above time and knows that with his unlimited power, all things will work for good to them that love God. God has unlimited power to bring something good out of evil. Proof of this ability is the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. In order to bring true love into human existence, God had to allow choice, which includes the choice of rejection and disobedience by his creation. After a period of allowing mankind to choose to love him, God promises to destroy evil. But there's another thing that sin brought. We're talking about trauma. As I started to work with these people under Illuminati mind control, this mind control is often called trauma-based mind control. I realized that what was being done on a very intense scale was actually being done on a looser scale to all of us. We're traumatized, and we're traumatized for a reason, to program us a lie. It's very important we catch on to this. First, a trauma is applied. Second, a lie is offered, which when accepted alleviates or improves the pain of the trauma. And third, systems of lies are built to trap us within the confines of the lies we believe in. For instance, imagine we're uh, thousands of years ago in India, and uh, be, uh, we are traumatized, and because this is demonic-based, the lie has told us, if you worship this phallus, this lingam, why, your pain will be alleviated. And we do. And because the, this is all demonic-based, why we have some alleviation of the pain. And then our culture is makes this a tradition and we are all trapped into the lie. Now here's another example. A Christian's life is cut short by Satan. The lie that is offered the survivors is God owes every person a full, happy, prosperous 70 to 80 year life. God is then blamed. Why did God let this happen? The resulting bitterness opens up a door for a person 
to get into immorality, which further entraps the person. The reality is, if God gave us what we deserved, in our weak, sinful nature, none of us would be alive because mankind is in rebellion to God, their creator. People need to focus on what they have received from God, not what we haven't received. To focus on what wasn't given rather than the great gifts that have been given is ungratefulness. Therefore, when a trauma is applied to our life, we can use that trauma to program a lie into our life or we can grow spiritually by seeing the deeper spiritual realities that the trauma is trying to teach us. And again, recapping all of this, Christ's life is proof that God has the ability to turn evil into good. And God has told us that he will use suffering to take our eyes off of trivial things so that we can see deeper e uh, eternal realities. It, uh, he also tells us, that uh, suffering will develop our faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. As we are taught in 1 Peter, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. And we are also receiving suffering to prove that we're a royal priesthood. And here is Apostle Paul, and he's talking to the philosophers of his day at the Areopolis, and he's going idols, idols everywhere, even an idol to an unknown God. And here he is again with the Acropolis in the background, talking to the philosophers of his day. I've come to tell you about an unknown God, and if you want to read what Paul taught, told the philosophers, of the ancient world, read in Acts 17. Now we talked about the Spirit of God leading us into all truth, the tree of life. And the Spirit revealed this to me, and then he confirmed that by giving the same revelation to other brothers, who uh, then I subsequently met. This is how paradise runs, or how it's sustained. We're looking at the real before we look at the counterfeit. It's very interesting. The Spirit revealed that God's attributes themselves are what sustain paradise. And if we look at how we define God or what God is, we find that those are the elements that make up the New Jerusalem. Now, the basic structure of paradise is a cube. And this has some inherent uh, attributes to it. For instance, it's stable. On the bottom, uh, we find true love. Now, I might interject here. I'm not teaching this as a new doctrine. I'm just presenting it to you so that, to help you picture or understand how things work. On the top is God's order, authority and authority covering. And then we find on the rest of the cube, justice, truth, equity, and life. And there are books that could be written about this revelation, but we are just briefly covering it. <clears throat> In contrast with this, this is the world system that Satan has set up. And it's a double pyramid structure. This was again given to me by revelation of God, and again it was confirmed by other brothers who received similar revelation. But what was very interesting was confirmation from an unexpected source. That was Norman Dodd. Norman Dodd was the chief investigator of the Reese Committee in 1953. Congress established the Reese Committee to investigate the un-American activities of the